On today's Question of Faith, what can we do about the situation in the Middle East? Hey everybody, this is Question of Faith. I am Mike Hayes. I am the Director of Young Adult Ministry in the Diocese of Cleveland. And I'm Father Damien Ferentz, a vicar for evangelization. And it's just us today. Hey, what That's do you right. know? Well, it's a really important day in the life of the church. It's a really important day in the life of the world mm. because the newly made Cardinal Pietro, let's see, P- Pier Battista Pizzaballa. <laughs> Pizza Bala, it's the best name. I remember people when the, when the Holy Father announced that he was making this uh, the the Patriarch of Jerusalem a cardinal. People are like Pizza Bala, Pizza Bala, but um, he's asked or uh, called for a uh, day of fasting in the Holy Land and fasting and abstinence, and has actually called the entire church to do so. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly for for peace in, in, in the, that part of the world yeah, right now. Yeah. Also, he offered himself in exchange for the hostages that are presently being held in, in Gaza, which I was, as soon as I said that, I said, you know, I, I reserve this statement for almost no one, but Saint, <laughs> yeah. that guy is doing something saintly. Yeah, I mean, that, it's just amazing. Well, we've talked before about the apostolic age, you know, the, the book that the bishop has given to his priests oh, right, and everybody's yeah. reading the, from Christendom to Apostolic Age. We're in Apostolic Age, and that's what the Apostolic Age looked like, that the bishops were saying, you take me, give those hostages back, yeah. I, I'll die for them. Yeah. I, as we celebrate the feast today, we just had Mass uh, with a lot of folks from our floor um, celebrating the martyr Ignatius of Antioch. Yeah. Who knew he was going to die, yep. as you said in your homily, dying. Yep. Yeah. And that the communion antiphon today was awesome, like, I'll be ground up by the teeth of beasts so that I'll be a worthy offering or something like that. It's really great. So So, go ahead. No, I was going to say, it's it's been a mess over there, obviously. You know, an attack from from Hamas on Israel, you know, a surprise attack. You know, they're they're 9-11, a lot of people are calling it, right? Rapes and murders and... All these things, yeah. All all sorts of terrible things. And then, you know, obviously a response back, which has, you know, put the situation even in more dire than it was right. before. Right. And, uh, you know, Cardinal Pizzaballo was saying, oh, you know, a lot of people have said to me, why don't the Palestinians who aren't, uh, you know, who aren't terrorists, who aren't part of Hamas, why don't they just leave? Mm. And I said, I said, you know, it's not that easy just to leave. And and that's what the Cardinal was saying yeah. in his press conference. He's like, yeah, you know, it's not safe out there. <laughs> he right. said it's, it's safer to stay put in some, in some ways. Yeah. And you've got I mean, the the tensions in the Middle East, and I'm no geopolitical expert, but right. I know enough Neither about I. <laughs> I know enough about the situation. Um, and and uh, so you have the Palestinians, and you have Hamas, who are living in Gaza, who are part of Palis- Palestine, but but a terrorist organization right. there, right? That attacks Israel. And then what you don't hear a lot about are the Palestinian Christians who are there, who are s- smaller and shrinking in number, but. Um, yeah, so the question of the day is, what in the world can we do? Because we could read all the stories on X or Twitter, and we could go on, mm. watch evening news, and just look at our feeds and think, oh my gosh, this is everything terrible is happening. So what, as Catholic Christians, can we do to assist in this situation? Yeah. Exactly. And so what is so it? So pray, first of all. That's it. Right? That's an easy one. Yeah. And fast and and abstain. And some of these things, I think, often, you know, you'll hear hear people, they'll say another word, but forget your thoughts and prayers. Um, Mm. I Like, show us action right now. Right. Yeah. Um, People say it all the time. Yeah. And I always say these are people who don't understand prayer. Right. (laughs) Right. And that prayer can lead to action and action on God's behalf and things that are out of our control here in the United States and the Diocese of Cleveland. So... One of the things that the Cardinal asked for was adoration, rosary. So the USCCB posted this yesterday, that we join Cardinal Pier Battista Pizzaballa, Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, and all the ordinaries of the Holy Land in calling for a day of fasting, abstinence, and prayer on October 17th. And then this is what the Cardinal said. On behalf of all the ordinaries of the Holy Land, I invite all parishes and religious communities to a day of fasting and prayer for peace and reconciliation. We ask that on Tuesday, October 17th, that's today, everyone hold a day of fasting, abstinence, and prayer. Let us organize prayer times with Eucharistic adoration 
with the recitation of rosary to our Blessed Virgin Mary. This is the way we all come together despite everything and unite collectively in prayer to deliver to God the Father our thirst for peace, justice, and reconciliation. Very nice. So that's pretty great. So we, we celebrated Mass with our crew today. I did pray a rosary on the way in and I've invited everybody to, you know, make visits to the chapel. I am going to fast from beer today because it's Theology on ah, Tap night. Yes, me too. And yeah. I usually drink beer on Theology on Tap, and so I'll just have two, two meals today in that. So yep. Remind me of that tonight, please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just in case I do, you know, a reflex kind of mm-hmm. thing. Like, oh, I'm at 4 C. let me get a beer. Sure. Oh, no, I'm not huh? doing that tonight. Oh, you're not? Uh, no, no. I mean, I'm not oh, going to drink oh, beer tonight. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be at the Altria tap. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. Um, yeah, you know, the, the other thing, too, is that supplies are running short out there. Um, the Cardinal was saying that, you know, they're, they're looking at all of their various resources that they have in the area to try to get to try to try get supplies, but the supply lines have been cut off, and so he's mm-hmm. been asking for uh, a corridor to be restored so that they can get, uh, they, they can get supplies into folks. And so I think that... that might likely happen. I know Pope Francis has called for that too, as well as as many people in our own American government have called for an, an opportunity for them to open that up. And President Biden's going there tomorrow, I believe. Oh, really? I did not um, know that. Yeah, on Wednesday he's supposed to go to Israel. So, okay. And um, so pray for his trip as well, because mm-hmm. I'm sure it's kind of dangerous for him to even set foot in Israel at this point. So. Yeah. The bishop had planned a trip to the Holy Land oh, that's right. yeah. in January, and that's been postponed now. Yeah. So have you been to the Holy Land? I have no? not. Okay. Yeah. I was there in 2017 with 11, 10 brother priests from the Diocese of Cleveland and uh, learned a lot. They call it the fifth gospel. Yeah. But what's, what, what I love about being Catholic, and I mentioned this in the homily, you know, just a, a few, a little while ago, is that. We can do something, and we, it's not just that we pout and say, oh, my gosh, um, I feel helpless. There's nothing that I can do. We can bind up our prayers. We can petition the Lord. We can pray for those um, who are suffering. We can pray for our enemies, the ones who have, who have uh, done these terrible deeds, um, and pray for peace and reconciliation. And remember, our Lord said that um, – some, some of these things only get driven out by fasting and prayer. Mm. And um, because we have bodies and we're not just spirits, the fact that we do pray, we kneel down to pray or sit quietly in front of the Blessed Sacrament and fast, like keep things from our body that we normally may be taking in, whether it's food or drink, to remind us that our deepest hunger is actually for God and the building up of his kingdom. And there's something that's very comforting about that. Even after the Mass today, I got in the elevator with Aaron, and uh, we both said, that was really great. It felt like we made a contribution somehow. We did our, we did our part um, in, in responding to the, the request for prayer. You know? Yeah, exactly. But the other thing, too, I think, is you know, there's a great article that um, the America magazine reprinted, but it was from the, the tablet, which was you know, the, the Jewish magazine. And a woman put, you know, like, how can Catholics support our Jewish neighbors after mm-hmm. the massacre in, in Israel? And one of the things she pointed out, which I, which I think I forget a lot, is that you know, Israel seems really far away, right? But to Jewish people, it doesn't mm-hmm. because they either have family, friends, or they just kind of have an attitude of, like, connection there, right? Yeah. You know, that they, they feel like it's a lot closer than, than it actually is in terms of miles, right? Yeah. Um, and so, like, I think really to keep that in mind and to kind of reach out, you know, to, to anybody that you know who might have people there, you know, or, mm-hmm. or who just feel, you know, that more deeply mm-hmm. than we feel it. Yeah. Um, you know, I was telling you before, you know, you said Father Ryan Mann has, has Jewish, right? His father was Jewish, right? Yes. Yeah, and my sister-in-law is, is Jewish, mm-hmm. and all uh, my nieces and nephews are Jewish. Um, my sister-in-law married mm-hmm. someone Jewish, and they, they raised their family in the Jewish mm-hmm. tradition, so... You know, so I've been reaching out to them here and there, you know, just little notes saying, hey, you know, thinking about you, you know, hope everybody's okay. And they often take trips there. And so I asked them, I mm. said, is everybody back in the United States was my first thought, you know, and, and no, no, everybody's here. It's fine. Mm. Um, but, you know, obviously they're they're feeling it, you know. Yeah. And, you know, so she, she also said that uh, some people have gone as far as to send white roses to the, their local synagogue. Oh. As a signed piece, so that was a nice. That was a nice gesture. That's um, cool. Yeah. So think about what maybe you can do to support your Jewish friends at this point, even if it's just a phone call or a text. The morning of the attack, I was in North Carolina, 
I had a wedding for a girl. She's not a girl anymore. Mm. She was when I first met her. She was in fourth grade at Seton Catholic School in Hudson. And she was marrying a guy from Cincinnati. And uh, that morning I checked my feed and sure enough saw this horrible attack of Hamas on Israel. And I didn't say anything about it at the wedding mass itself at the beginning, but I did make a concerted effort to make sure that whoever was there, and I, you know, a lot of times at weddings you get people who, even if they're Catholic, haven't been to church in a while, a lot of people who aren't Catholic, this is sure. first time in the church, so it's a great opportunity to evangelize. And just let people know that whether or not you're a daily mass goer and you understand everything that's happened at this mass, or this is your first time in a church or a Catholic church in a long time or ever, like you're welcome here and the Lord wants to do something. So participate as best you can in all this. And that mm-hmm. night, one of the groomsmen uh, was Jewish. And uh, he came up to me and he said, Father, when you said that at the beginning, he goes, you know, I'm Jewish and I, you know, I'm not comfortable in a Catholic church, but you made me feel comfortable and welcome, especially in the light, in light of everything that was going on in Israel this morning. So thank you for that. It was a, it was a, it was a, 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 a great comfort. Hmm. I didn't plan to do that, so by the Lord's grace, that happened. But that was that was a nice um, affirmation. Yeah, yeah, that is nice. Mm-hmm. But when I was in Buffalo, I became friends with Rabbi Alex, who hmm. was uh, who was right down the block. And as part of my formation there, uh, I would do a lot of work with the network with uh, the network of religious communities. And uh, so often, I would have to. Uh, do a little reflection on attending um, a local synagogue or another church. So I think the the three that I did, I went to um, the the Jewish uh, the Jewish synagogue. I went to a Wesleyan church. Mm. Which I'd never been in a Wesleyan church before. Yeah. That was interesting, and um, I went to a Sikh uh, service as well. So it was cool. it was kind of interesting to to do all that. But uh, Rabbi Alex and I would go to to go to coffee like on the reg, which was really nice, mm. and so we developed a nice relationship. So I have not reached out to him to, as of yet, and mm. so I was thinking about him this morning. So I said I'm going to give him a give him a shout. When I lived in Rome, I used to take long walks almost every night, and I'd go walk over to Trastevere, which is a really cool um, neighborhood across the river. Mm. And on the way there, I'd walk through the Jewish ghetto, and there's a a couple markers. There's a marker on a school where children were taken out of school um, during the Holocaust and put in mm-hmm. camps. And there's a beautiful Jewish synagogue. Just, just you could see it right from the river. And that was the one that in 1986 John Paul II went to visit. It was the oh, first time right. a pope ever visited a synagogue and prayed with the the Jewish people because his little buddy. I think his name was Jerzy Kluger. Well, his best friend as a, as a child was a, a Jewish boy. And so he, he really facilitated a great relationship with the Jewish, um, our Jewish brothers and sisters, which Benedict and Francis have both continued. But I, I thought of that the other day, too. I thought, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just, you know, we, we all have connections in some way, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and even, even our Catholic faith, you know. I mean, we read the Hebrew Scriptures. It's part of our Mass, you know, and so yes. we honor that. Right. Um, I know my, my nieces my, and my nephew often um, will have questions, you know, that they know what I do, and they, and they always come to me with questions. And so we have a great, we have a nice dialogue going on uh, here and there. You know, they, they'll ask their questions. I could ask them my questions and uh you know, and we one of the things that I really want to do long term um, is to think about. You know, there are a lot of families now of mixed faiths, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I said, well, you know, how do how, and we struggle with this in our own family, right? You know, like how do we pray for each other when we're of different faiths? How do we do that? You know, and and how do we do it together when we're together? And how do we do it when we're apart? When we're apart, I think a lot of families struggle with that today. Mm-hmm. Um, so Ed Hanberg over at uh, John Carroll. University said he's seen a lot of that in his students who come, you know, with with little sure. or no religious experience right. sometimes. And he said, and if they do, sometimes it's a mixed faith experience. So he said that uh, he's been talking with them about, you know, how they might how they might have dialogue about that as as fellow students. And I said to him, I said, you should do that as families. I said, you bring that to families and try to experiment with that with families. And he, he thought that was a great idea. So this this may end up becoming like doctoral work for me. Mm. <laughs> so I was cool. like, I was like, yeah, this might be a good idea. Um, so, yeah. Cool. 
Well, we didn't talk about what church we're going to visit, so which church I was thinking we, we should go to the east side where our Jewish community actually lives. By the way, have you been to the Maltz Museum? Yes. Yeah, I've been Not as recently, well. but I drove by it the other day. Oh, interesting. But I, it was at night, so I didn't stop in. But yeah. I, yes, I've been there. Yeah, I've been it's there wonderful. a couple times myself. It's really wonderful. If you haven't been there, go. It's, 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 really, it's, it's really moving. Uh, well, but I thought maybe Jesu. Oh, on the east side. sure. I mean, you talked about Jesu this morning in your homily, I thought. So I was like, that's a good place to go. The Jesuit church over by John Carroll there. Yes, right across the street. I think it's Miramar Boulevard. I think it's, that's correct, yeah. It's got more marble than most churches in the whole diocese, but it's, <laughs> it's beautiful. And we host our CLE 216 uh, youth conference there. So a lot of it's at John Carroll, and then the adoration and confession takes place in that church. Right. Um, I used to spend some time in there between classes when I was a student at John Carroll. Um, they've got a grade school there. Father mm-hmm. Lucas Lagoskis is the uh, pastor. He's a late Catholic grad, which is kind of cool, mm-hmm. and did part of his Jesuit training in Lithuania, and he's bilingual, so yep. good man. You, you may remember him from our videos on the Eucharist uh, where we asked our, our presbyterate, what, a, what does the Eucharist mean to you? And he was saying that every time he consecrates the, the Eucharist, he says his hands still shake to this yeah. day. And he said when he lifts the host, he sees the body of Christ and all the folks. I thought that was really moving. So. Yeah. He, he offered a retreat this year for our seminary, St. Mary's Seminary, and mm-hmm. he offered a retreat day for Bishop Senior Staff, which was really great. Yeah. On the Sacred Heart. So, yeah. So that's Jesu over on the east side. Check it out. Uh, readings for this 29th Sunday uh, from Isaiah this week. Uh, for the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that the, toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know it. There is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. I thought that was appropriate for today. Mm, yeah. um, for me, too, I think that it's also you know, just a reminder that God will be with us, you know, even in our trials. The readings today, actually, that you, mm-hmm. that you read today were yeah. also along the same lines. Uh, I will, I'll go with the gospel. So Jesus is, asks for a coin. He says, whose image is this? Whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. And at that, he said to them, then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and God what belongs to God. Many ways to interpret this. My favorite way is what doesn't belong to God. Hmm. Everything belongs to God. So whatever you're doing, however you're living, always have the context of that all of eternity. There's, you don't partition your life and this is my political life here and this hmm. is my um, social life here and this is my sexuality here and this is my leisure life here. No, it's all, it's all for God. And so it's that broad Catholic vision of things, I think, is God super and all helpful. things. That's yeah. it. Oh, exactly. I, I quoted a Jesuit. Uh, <laughs> well, I did go to Jesuit college. You I went did. to John Carroll. So That's what right. The heck, yeah. yeah. I was also saying that for me, that, that gospel is often about withholding, right? That people are, are really eager to withhold taxes from Caesar, and Jesus turns around and says, But what do you withhold from God? Oh, very nice. Yeah. Well, God gives us everything, so we need to return everything to Him. Absolutely. And so coming your way soon on this podcast, we'll have some video. We got some cameras in here now, so we're going we're gonna to do that. We're coming up on 100 episodes. I think we're about six away now. Nice. Uh, so for the 100th, I think we'll kick that off uh, with our buddy Jeff Stutzman who will come in and help us. Oh. And, uh, so that'll be fun. And then um, if you have questions, you could send those to us, mhays at dioceseofcleveland.org, and we'll answer your question of faith right here on this podcast. We'll have all that and more next time on Question of Faith. Yeah.